Hello class, this is the second lecture for 5-2 from the Forrester textbook and we are talking about the cosine of the difference of angles and I want to prove this to you and what you need to bring to class to show that you watch this video is a the copy of this proof that we're about to do. You may not necessarily need to be able to do this for the test, but this is a good example of how mathematical proofs work and I think this will help you a lot to sort of experience something this big and interesting. So what we're talking about doing is we're going to have an angle, for example, we might turn angle alpha and that will take us somewhere on the circle, the unit circle, and then we will have an angle beta and I'm going to stack angle beta on top of angle alpha. So that means that we're going to end up somewhere here with angle beta being just that part on the inside. Now, what you should be able to tell me already is, assuming we're on the unit circle, where is this point right here? Well, if it's on the unit circle, we've gone to the right, the full radius of the circle, which is one, and we've gone up none. So that point right there is one comma zero. Now, if we have turned angle cosine, where has that taken us? Well, we know that the x value is always the cosine of the angle, and the y value is always the sine of the angle. So this, oh, not beta, alpha. Uh, that this then represents the coordinates of where we've gone on the unit circle to get to this point. What about this point up here? Well, this whole great big grand angle of turning all of that, what's that? It's alpha plus beta. So the point then must be up here at cosine of alpha plus beta and sine of alpha plus beta. So I hope you can see that the sum of angles then can't possibly be just the uh, the, the cosine of alpha plus beta is not the same thing as cosine alpha plus cosine beta, right? That cosine beta and plus cosine alpha would take us somewhere further to the right outside of the unit circle. So this is kind of a mystery. This is kind of a difficult thing. And one of the ways that mathematicians try to approach something that is difficult is to see, well, can I do the same thing again in a different way? And then those two must be equivalent. So what they've done, what in the past has been the proof of this, is to say, let's turn down, for what? Angle beta going down here. And so where have we ended up now at this point? We've gone cosine of negative beta and sine of negative beta. And that's the point that we've gotten to down there. This is not too difficult to think about, it would be exactly the same if we had gone up beta, except now our left right is the same, only our y is, is negative. So this is equivalent to cosine of beta, sine of negative beta. That if we had gone up angle beta, we still would have gone right, uh, but if we had gone up, uh, turned positive angle of beta, we would have gone into a positive y, so we need our y to be negative of what it was. So you look at this whole big circle that we've drawn now, and you have to think which two parts must be identical. Well, this leg right here is one, this leg right here is one, these are all different radii, they all must have a length of one. And this angle that I previously highlighted in orange is alpha plus beta. What's this angle right here? Well, it's also alpha plus beta. We just happen to have turned down from zero uh, beta degrees, but if you string those two together, that must also be alpha plus beta. So if you think back to geometry, if you've got side angle side the same between two triangles, I'll draw one of them here in pink, that this triangle has got sides of one and the angle's the same. And this triangle, I'll draw it in purple, has got sides of one and angle of 
alpha plus beta, those triangles must be the same. So the distance from this first uh, pink part to this other uh, purple part, those other sides of the triangle must be congruent. They must be identical. They must be the same. So what that means then is that if we set up the distance here, if we say, so let's, let's do, what is that first distance? To go from cos alpha sine alpha down to cos beta sine negative beta. Well, you remember the distance formula is when we say the difference in the x's uh, plus the dip squared plus the differences in the y squared must equal the distance squared. So uh, what we're saying is that that has to come from the differences in the x's. So cos alpha minus cos beta squared. That's the differences in the x's between this x and this x. And then the differences in the y's is sine alpha minus uh, sine negative beta, all squared. So that's this distance right here. That's this distance on the purple triangle. And then if we say these triangles are the same, that must be the same as this distance over there on the pink triangle. That that must be the same as the distance here. Okay, so what's the difference in our x's? That we've got cos alpha plus beta minus one squared plus, what's the differences in our y's? Sine alpha plus beta minus zero squared. So that, uh, those two expressions must be equivalent to each other. Now, this is going to get really, really huge. I'm gonna go ahead and square all the bits and pieces here, and that's gonna make probably the biggest mess that you've ever made in a math class. One of the wonderful things about living in God's universe is that you go ahead and just spread out all the mess, and it will come back together. God is good, stuff works. If you've got a jigsaw puzzle and you spread it all out, you can rebuild it. You can get it back together if you find all the corners and the edge pieces and the similar colors and you gradually clean it up. That go ahead and make the mess and then you'll be able to put it back together in a coherent way. So the first thing we've got to do though is we've got to talk about this sine negative beta. Like we said, turning down is the same as going down in the y direction. So this is equivalent to negative sine beta. Minus a negative is a plus. So this whole expression right here, I could have written it, skipping steps, which I wouldn't do to you, as sine alpha plus sine beta quantity squared. That those things are equivalent to each other because you can see that turning down angle beta in the and then figuring out the y is the same as going up but then flipping the sign s i g n that can be confusing all right so let's square this first one anytime you've got something minus something squared you always end up with the first one squared plus the second one squared no, you gotta be careful. It's them times each other times two is the terms that you're forgetting plus the second one squared, okay? So that's, I've, I've taken care of, I'll switch to black highlighter. I've taken care of that one. Now I need to take care of this one. Now I need to say that that is all equal to, or excuse me, that's being added to it of sine alpha plus sine beta squared. Again, something plus something squared is always equal to the first one squared plus two times them times each other plus the last one squared. Okay, so all of that is the distance on the purple triangle. That that's this first distance up here. And we said that that must be the same as the distance up here. 
okay? So if we square this term now, so now I'm squaring this one right, oh, no, I'm squaring this one right here, okay? So it's getting really nasty here. It's that first one squared, and with a complicated angle, minus two times them times each other. Well, timesing by one doesn't matter, but you still end up with that. And then the last one squared is one. Okay, almost there. Now the last one, subtracting zero, that's so easy. It's the same as just itself. So that means it's just sine squared alpha plus beta. So we're saying that those two expressions must be equal to each other. And this is the part where this is very, very nasty. This is as bad as it gets. These things are huge, but there's a way to make them much, much smaller. Now, I hope you have got that song pretty well stuck in your head when we talk about the Pythagorean identities, that sine squared plus cos squared equals one. And so I'm leaving off saying the angle because it doesn't matter what the angle is as long as it's the same. If you have any cosine squared plus any sine squared of the same angle, you can just call that one. So do we have that anywhere on this expression? Do we have somewhere where we've got the same angle? Well, yeah, right here, we've got cos squared alpha plus beta and sine squared alpha plus beta that those must make a one, okay? And then on that side, we already ha we had another one, so that means I've taken care of that, and we had a minus two cos alpha plus beta. Now what about on the other side, the other part of this equality? We said we've got cos squared alpha, and then rather far away from it over here, we've got sine squared alpha. So together, those two parts make one. Is there another one that we can do? Yes, right here. Cos squared beta, sine squared beta. Those are the same as each other. Well, they're part of the same equation that, that adds together to make one. And we had some other stuff on this side. We had a negative two cosine alpha, cosine beta, and we had a positive two sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, so we canceled a huge amount of stuff and now I'm able to fit this all on one line and we've got one equality. So, is there any more canceling we do? Can we simplify this down any more? Well, if you've got a one on one side and a one on the other, those will cancel. If you've got a one on one side and a one on the other, those will cancel. And if we divide by negative two, we will end up with something very, very simple. So what I mean is, let's take that side over there, let's write it first. We're saying that cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Whoa. That just simplified so much. That came down and was initially huge and it blew up like a mushroom cloud and was ginormous and then it came so far down. This tiny little expression here with just four trig functions is a way to drastically simplify the cosine sum of angles. Now the book goes through a very similar kind of proof and ends up proving that cosine of alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So you can see there that it's got that same pattern. The angles all go alpha beta alpha beta. And then, oh, here's the interesting part. The trig functions go cosine cosine sine sine. Cosine cosine sine sine. It's like a, a, a conga line cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And, and this is my goofy little trick, I know, but it helps me remember that the cosine sum or difference of angles is the cosine conga. Both of them start with C-O, cosine, conga, cosine, cosine, sine, sine.
cosine, cosine, sine, sine. This, this is a really helpful trick. If you try to keep this in your mind, you will remember. The hard part to remember, though, is that the sign, the S-I-G-N, flips. That the uh, sum of angles turns into a difference. The difference of angles turns into a sum. So this is a really, really powerful pattern. This will help you in 5-2 to start either expanding or contracting different cosine expressions that you might need. But if you ever see something that makes you go cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, or if you ever have a sum of angles that you need to convert into simpler stuff, keep that in mind, okay? So I will see you in class and we will finish 5-2. Have a great day.